Thank you for joining us this evening. We do have Hanson Elementary in the house. Woo woo! Thanks for being here. Um, our first item to address is the Pledge of Allegiance. And Mr. Rogers, I understand you've brought a special student in to lead us tonight. Ooh, okay. Great, now would be the time. Thank you. Do we have a microphone for Elijah? Thank you. Please face the flag. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you. Thank you. Elijah, before you hand off the mic. Elijah, how long have you been a student at Hanson? Great. Do you have any siblings at the school? Okay, very good. Well, thank you so much for coming in and leading the pledge tonight. Very nice. Okay. We are now on item C2, and that is establishing a quorum and a welcome, of course. We do have a quorum tonight with Roger Dome uh, absent. He is out of the area traveling with family, so we'll have to get by without him tonight. We do have one item of action that we took in closed session. Mr. Drum, thank you. All right. In closed session today, uh, by motion of member Don Perfect, seconded by member Maya Phillips, the board approved the expulsion of student number 23, dot one zero through December 20th of 2024. The roll call vote of the board was as follows. The ayes were Darren Drum, Dan Summers, Don Perfect, Maya Phillips. As Ms. Perfect already stated, Mr. Dome is absent. There were no no's and there was no abstentions. Thank you very much. Item C4 is also you, instructions for addressing the governing board. Good evening. Instructions, these are the instructions for addressing the government board, the governing board. The Ramona Unified School District welcomes your participation at the district's board meetings. Your participation assures us of continuing community interest in our schools. We, to assist you in the ease of speaking and or participating in our meetings, the following guidelines are provided. Orange request to be heard cards are available to all audience members who wish to speak on any agenda item and or under the category of item E, which is public comment. These presentations are limited to three per person or 15 minutes per item. Please submit the completed orange cards to the board's recording secretary in advance of the item presentation. That would be Karina at the end of the uh, table here to my left. Speakers are asked to direct all comments to board members. Request to be heard cards will not be accepted once the agenda item has commenced. All participation participants are asked to be respectful of each other and of speakers when they are addressing the board. Please com pu public comment is set aside for members of the audience to raise issues that are not specifically on the agenda. These presentations are limited to three minutes per person or 15 minutes per item. Public comments may be submitted online at the link listed at the top of the agenda. Please note that electronically submitted comments will be printed and distributed to the board members but will not be read aloud during the meeting. Thank you very much, Darren. I appreciate that lengthy explanation. All right, item C5 is approval of the agenda. I will move, I will move uh, for approval of the agenda, but I would like to pull uh, something that's on our agenda, but it didn't make it to the public agenda. It's item G9. Um, I'd like to just continue that to another meeting just because of the confusion. Thank you very much. Do we have a second? On approval of the agenda, removing item G9. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 That carries 4-0. Thank you very much. We're now on item C6. That's approval of the consent calendar. Those are the items marked with an asterisk in the agenda. I'll move approval. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That carries 4-0. Thank you. All right. We are now on Section D, Recognitions and Presentations. And as I mentioned earlier, we have Hanson Elementary in the house. Please, come on, Mr. Rogers. Tell us. <laughs> T 
tell us all the great things at Hanson. All right, thank you so much, uh, board members and cabinet members, for inviting me up to speak on behalf of Hanson Elementary School. My name is Chris Rogers. I'm the principal at Hanson, and I'd like to share some highlights about the school. We'll uh, pull up that presentation. I'm a new principal to Ramona and to Hanson, so I've been learning about the school and the community and the Ramona Unified School District, and um, I've been keeping my eye out for what makes Hanson unique and special, and there's four things I'd like to talk about. So we can get to the uh, view slideshow. I think if you click on slideshow at the top, top menu, file, home, insert, design, transitions, animations, slideshow. No, 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 go across the top, right in the middle of the menu bar. Keep going right. Further right, one more right. There we go. Play from beginning. Bingo, all right. What makes Hanson special? I want to talk about the students and our enrollment, and uh, I want to talk about our amazing staff. I want to talk about the facilities and grounds, which are beautiful. And the really the, 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 really the secret sauce to the school is the school spirit, community, and family involvement at Hanson. So starting with students, we, um, in a time of declining enrollment across the state, we are a school that is blessed with increased enrollment. We've, we're up to 560 students this year from 498 last year, and we have the highest enrollment that we've had since 2018. So we've had year-over-year -year growth at Hanson, which shows that we have um, earned the public's trust and, and confidence in our school. And we mean, uh, we mean to keep that trust by providing a, uh, an excellent education and providing a safe and engaging and fun learning environment. Uh, but what really makes it work is these amazing staff at Hanson. <laughs> um, our staff are dedicated. Um, none, of this, none of the achievements that we, we've made uh, would be possible without our staff. They are uh, supportive of each other, and everyone at Hanson works together from support staff, classified, certificated. Everyone's committed to the success uh, of the students nurturing their academic and their personal growth. So they are an amazing group, and uh, they really, here's more photos of our, of our staff. They really make Hanson a special, not only special for the students, but a special place to work. So that is something that is very unique. The work environment is extremely positive, and that, of course, affects the students as well. Our facilities are amazing. The, uh, I just want to give a shout out to everyone involved in, in, in the upkeep and the maintenance of the, the facilities. It's a beautiful modern building, which is why I was surprised on the first day of school back in August after a brief a rainstorm the prior night to enter the building and find damp hallways filled with frogs. <laughs> So here we have, uh, we have, we have a big uh, a forklift loading up materials, and I want to say thank you to the board for approving a, an entire brand new roof at Hanson. So even though it was a modern building, there was a problem with the roof that is now in the process of being fixed, and we are very, very grateful to the board for that. And um, here's some more pictures of our interior and exterior of our campus. It's just, it's gorgeous inside and out. Special props to Miguel de la Torre, our new lead custodian. Does an amazing job. <clears throat> um, and then uh, Matt Hudson and the whole d department over at maintenance and operations do a great job of just with our landscaping. It's, it's just, the maintenance there is, is phenomenal. And it makes it uh, an attractive, welcoming place for our families. Um, at the center of a, uh, uh, the, really the secret sauce at Hanson that really sets it apart is that we have an amazing community, and that includes our parent volunteers. Uh, we have Oasis tutors that come in. We have a student council that's very active, and then our PTA just does an amazing job with community events. So I wanted to highlight some of the events we've had. This is a picture from our Jump for Heart fundraising event. Um, this is Tracy Stevens, one of our fifth grade teachers, organizes this every year. It's a huge hit with all of our students. We raise quite a bit of money and get all the kids out there getting active. 
Um, our student council does fundraising and then puts on events for the entire school. Uh, a lot of movie nights after school, uh, after school events, and the big hit is our fall festival every year, where we have um, costumes, pumpkin decorating contests, all kinds of fun things I've happening. I've never heard of a fall festival. I've heard of the Monster Mash. Monster Mash. <laughs> there we go. That's thank you very much, Miss Perfect. Uh, that's that's a newbie mistake. <laughs> I get one this year. <laughs> the Monster Mash. Um, the Monster Mash Festival. Absolutely. It's a great, great community event. Get every, we get everyone from the neighborhood out. Um, our, our holiday school performances and our annual talent show are huge draws. We have an excellent PAC, and uh, these are highlights of uh, community involvement. Here's a picture of one of our holiday productions. And then we have a morning run club sponsored by um, our PTA and our, the volunteer in charge of that is um, Diana Edwards. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, students earn points for the m number of miles they run, keeps them active before school instead of just uh, standing around waiting for class. That, speaking of the PTA, our PTA raises funds throughout, uh, at the beginning of the year for events and activities throughout the year. This was their big fundraiser this year. This was the Fun Run Color Run. It was a huge hit. Um, kids w earned money per mile they ran, and we uh, had a, a lot of color out there as well. We see them getting drenched with the, the color powder. It was very, a very successful fundraiser, which led to some really great events. A couple that I'd like to highlight was our annual father-daughter dance in February. We packed out the PAC. Uh, we had dancing, uh, snacks, uh, everyone dressed super sharp for this event. It was a huge, huge hit. Uh, following that, the next month, we had our, m our mother-son event, which had a slightly uh, different focus, <laughs> but was nevertheless very, very engaging. We had a BMX show and a mobile skate park come out on campus. And this is just a, a couple examples of the amazing events and services the PTA provides for our students, which leads to an amazing climate and uh, a great sense of school spirit. Now moving forward, we are building, we are going to continue building on our strengths at Hanson by um, having professional development based on our collective commitment to accelerate student learning. Currently we're working on teacher clarity and we're going to move forward with uh, our collective commitments next year. We are, we've adopted a new social emotional learning program we've, we're purchasing called Harmony SEL. Um, we're looking at new phonics programs for next year, either uh, possibly UFLY or SIPS phonics. And um, we have teachers, a cohort of teachers who are becoming trainers of trainers in whole brain teaching classroom management strategies, which are going to further improve the climate at Hanson. And we're going to continue our community outreach in uh, all of our special events that make Hanson really a, a center of a neighborhood community and life uh, in Ramona. Thank you for your time and attention for this little highlight reel of Hanson. And, um, and we appreciate your support at our school. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming in. You know I love all the Ramona schools, but Hanson has a special place in my heart. I can all, see why. It's the one school that all four of my kids attended at one time or another, and now a grandchild. So, yeah, yeah, we're very invested over there. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you to your staff for coming as well. Yes, Darren, please. Go Hawks. Great, great turnout tonight. Mr. Rogers, great presentation. Thank you very much for uh, bringing quite a bit of your staff. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I know um, giving up your Thursday evening, there's a lot of other things you could be doing tonight. Uh, great presentation, and I really loved how much pride you're showing um, in your students, in your staff, in your facilities. Um, and, it, and it really comes through that this is genuine and it's a good place to go to school and a good place to work. So it is. thank you very much for, for helping us create that environment. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming in. All right. So um, moving to one of our older students, item D2 is a report from our student board members. And tonight we have Natalie to steal the whole show. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thanks for being here tonight. All right, item D3, that's a report from California School Employee Association, Chapter 733. Not seeing anyone tonight, then we'll move on to Ramona Teachers Association. It's helpful. This time I didn't completely forget because it was on a Tuesday, so... <laughs> That was my excuse last time. Not Sorry about one. that. <laughs> no, my bad. Thanks for my teammate back there who uh, picked me up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a few things happening across the district. To start out, the RHS NJROTC marksmanship team placed 12th in the nation uh, at all service nationals at Camp Perry, Ohio in March. Um, the team also was fifth place overall in, the, in all of the Navy teams. Uh, and number one in the state of California. Our ROTC instructors have worked extremely hard and it's great to see that paying off with great results. RHS varsity baseball team uh, won, the won first place in the Lions tournament over spring break. Uh, according to Coach Welch, that is arguably the best and largest tournament in the country. Oh. Uh, they had won it only one other time in our entire history in 2010, and they beat the number one team in Nevada to advance during the tournament. Uh, two walk-off victories, so pretty fun. Uh, RHS also <laughs> sent several teachers and students to Skills USA, as Natalie talked about, and so we do have three students advancing to nationals. So congrats to the students and their teachers for all the hard work this year. And uh, good luck to those teachers for putting in some extra hours and traveling this summer. Uh, Montecito is keeping it fun for students. They were visited by leprechauns last month, hiding lucky clovers all around campus that led many students to prizes. They're also looking forward to hosting their second blood drive on May 8th to finish a strong year by continuing to help our community. Um, and they would like you all to know that all people who have blood are welcome to join. <laughs> Montecito also had 10 students compete at Skills USA Conference and will have a student advancing to nationals as well. Mr. Jordan is proud of all of his students for their hard work this year. All 11th graders at Montecito are preparing for the upcoming CASP test, and Dr. Maravich is meeting with every single junior to set personal goals to be ready for their state testing. They also have 18 students graduating from FutureBound this year, which is the biggest graduating class in the last 10 years. Two teachers at Barnett are taking on rebuilding and redoing their school garden. Uh, they have many different donations from parents, and um, have gotten it started, which is really awesome. Their PTSA also just had a new AV system put into the cafeteria, which is amazing. Um, and many fun things are coming in the next few weeks at Barnett. Mrs. Guzman's class at Ramona Elementary um, is working on fixing up the memorial garden for Fred. And they're starting their own veggie garden as well. Uh, the kids have done an amazing job pulling out the weeds from the memorial garden and picking up all those pine needles. Uh, Mrs. Gunnett shared that TK students at RE did their first art reach lesson this week and they had a great experience. They're also very excited to have Mr. Weissman back at RE. The third grade classes enjoy his music. Uh, Mr. Weissman goes beyond teaching music skills. He teaches them appreciation for other cultures, teaching them in the process acceptance and respect. During spring break at Ramona Elementary, the kindergarten classrooms received a flooring makeover. Mrs. Powell wants to give a huge thanks to For Us for the donation, as well as Marcy Hayes Laws. Um, the old carpet was replaced with beautiful new floors, uh, new wood floors. So pictures are on the RTA website uh, or Facebook, social media. Mm, give us till tomorrow. Um, March was a big month for MVA ASB. They helped the PTSA put on their annual pasta dinner where hundreds of people were fed and more than 70 raffle prizes were won. Then the ASB joined with the whole student body to play in their yearly March Madness with competitions including things like dodgeball and tug of war. RCC um, elementary students are excited to start the PE rotation this week. 
And finally, Mrs. Ferguson's fifth grade class at Hanson has been studying the original 13 colonies and the events leading to the American Revolution. They've created their own colonies modeled after the 13 American colonies and will be experiencing how and why the original colonists came to stage a revolution. All of the research and activities involved will prepare them for the annual Colonial Fair held in May, which you are all welcome to join in on. Very nice. Thank you so much for coming in, Corey. Don, I got a comment? Yes. For those of you who don't know, this Lions Tournament that Corey spoke about, it goes back 60 years or more. And she d accurately described it as the biggest and best in America. <laughs> and for our high school team to win that tournament, they were up against virtually every high school baseball team in San Diego County. This is a huge deal. So for everyone to know how big it is, I just thought I'd throw that wow. in. Wow, that is fantastic. Thank it you, is. Dan. Thank you, Corey, for coming in. That's a very nice report. All right, Section E, public comment. This is where we would take speakers on items not on tonight's agenda. We have none. All right. Very nice. Our next item to address is uh, F3, and that's a report on graduation and promotion dates. Good evening, President Perfect and Governing Board. It's that time of year again, and I feel like as I was thinking about this board meeting, I, th I thought, didn't we just do that? Uh, it is promotions and graduations and award ceremonies time of year, and it's that time where we get to celebrate um, all of the hard work that our students have done. This information item includes dates and times for each of our school's end of year commencements, and the superintendent's office will be in touch with all of you in the event that you are able to attend the celebrations. Very nice. So Karina, these will go in the calendar and, you know, okay, great. Thank you. I'll probably still stick this on the fridge, but thank you very much. All right. Um, the next item is F4, and that's approval of instructional materials for Spanish 1, 2, and 3. Yes, board members. Also at this time of the year, we are wrapping up our instructional materials pilot. So we do have three instructional materials tonight for Spanish coming forward for Spanish 1, 2, and 3. These materials were under pilot according to board policy 61611. They were utilized by teachers and students throughout the review process. Um, parents had an opportunity to also weigh in during the pilot through school site council, the instructional materials survey that was online, and the, uh, and the materials were also available in the hallway for anybody who wanted to come in. Tonight this item is a discussion possible action and the recommendation is the board approves this item as presented. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Do we have any motions? Uh, I reviewed that book, and the thing I liked most about it was the immersion aspect of it. Into the Spanish and I, I really appreciated that. I think that's a fascinating thing. So I like the Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Maya. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. The next item is approval of instructional materials for welding. The same information that I just shared about Spanish could be shared about the process for our welding uh, text. This text was also used by the welding teacher and was reviewed also by the site administrator, school site council, and has been available for parent comment and review as well. This is a discussion possible action item, and the recommendation is for the board to approve welding skills, both edition as the core instructional materials. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I move approval. Thank you, Maya. I'll second. Thank you, Dan. All in favor? Aye. 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 That carries unanimously. All right, F6, approval of instructional materials for introduction to film and video production. The last and final instructional materials for this evening is Film Art, an introduction, 12th edition, and this has also gone through the pilot process, um, been reviewed by teachers, students, and parents through the similar process. Um, and is being recommended for approval tonight by the board. Thank you. Do we have a motion? A motion to approve. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 That carries unanimously. Moving to section G, human resources. Our next item is an information piece. Uh, G2, initial proposal from Ramona Teachers Association to Ramona Unified School District for the 2024-25 successor agreement. Members of the board, you have before you the initial proposal from RTA to RUSD uh, for the <coughs> items and articles that they wish to open in the negotiations that will commence soon. Okay, thank you very much for that information. Item G3 is a public hearing on that document. I'll open the public hearing. This is the time for anyone to come and speak to the board on this topic, even without an orange speaker slip. Seeing none, I'll close the hearing. Hearing is closed. Yeah, Procedural, right? Uh, I, sometimes somebody will surprise me and come forward on one of those, right? Item G4 is initial proposal from Ramona Unified School District to California School Employee Association and it's Ramona Chapter 733 for 2425. Uh, last month we, we approved our proposal to RTA and this month we are asking for approval of our uh, initial proposal to CSEA and included in this are the articles that the district is proposing that we open and negotiate um, and the, we are presenting that to the school board. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you for the information. This is again a public hearing. Public hearing is open on the initial proposal from Ramona Unified School District to California School Employee Association and its Ramona Chapter 733 for the 2024-2025 year. <coughs> Seeing no speakers, I'll close the hearing. Hearing is closed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay. Uh, item G6 is adoption of initial proposal from Ramona Unified School District to California School Employee Association and it's Ramona Chapter 733 for 2425. Following the just concluded public hearing, we're now asking the board to officially adopt our pro initial proposal. This is an action item. I'll make a motion to adopt. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Darren. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. Item G7 is approval of uniform complaint quarterly report Williams case complaints. Uh, as you know, quarterly we're required to uh, share with the board if we've had any complaints regarding instructional materials, facilities, teacher vacancies, misassignments as defined in the law. As you can see in the supporting documents, we have had zero Williams complaints filed from January 1st to March 31st. Very nice. I think we like zero complaints. This is an action item. Do we have a motion? I move approval. Thank you, Maya. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Darren. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries unanimously. All right. Item G8, approval of a short-term staff permit. Members of the board, we have a, a current employee, um, Angela Leva, who is a classified employee who is now pursuing a teaching degree and a credential and a going through a program uh, has not completed that program yet. However, we are able to submit on her behalf for a short term staff permit, which permit, which would allow us to hire her as she completes the credentialing process. Uh, as you know, finding special education teachers is difficult. Angela is, is one of our own and we're excited to support her as she pursues this path. Thank you. This is an action item. I move approval. Thank you, Maya. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Dan. All in favor? Aye. 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 That carries unanimously. All right, moving through to Section H, Administrative Services. Ah, consent, consent, consent. Are we seriously on approval of acceptance of gifts already? Wow. Okay. okay. Can't hide the smile on that. <laughs> All right, thank you. <clears throat> so, who's talking to us about that? I am tonight. Good Hello, Tony. Nice to see you. Thank President you for being Perfect. here. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, tonight we are presenting the uh, listed donations and gifts that have been offered to the school district since the last board meeting, and we are recommending the acceptance of the items listed as the gifts for this board meeting. Okay, so looking at this list, it looks like some very generous gifts here. 
Wow. Um, do we have it up on the screen? We do. That is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, this is an action item. Would anyone like to move approval? I move approval. Thank you. Second? I'll second that. Thank you, Darren. All in favor? Aye. 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 That carries unanimously. And boy, just looking at this list of generous gifts, I can see some really exciting activities that will be happening for our students. So thank you very much for everyone involved. All right, Section I, District Operations. Uh, our item one, I1 is Presentation of Hanover Career Technical Education Needs and Interest Survey. Yes, good evening, President Perfect, members of the board and community. We have Okay, so we're getting them on right now? Okay. <coughs> so while we're, while we're making that connection, board members, I believe you have a handout on your table that looks like this, related to this item. Is this document available online yet? It's not in the agenda. Will it be posted after tonight's meeting? Okay, thank you. Brian, did I understand that they were watching on YouTube so they'd know when we got to them? Okay, great. Okay, let's see. Let's give them a minute. So, Don, while we're waiting, um, I'm not 100% sure on the numbers, but mm -hmm. if I remember from a previous board presentation, 960-something... That sounds Give right. or take of our current high school, of our 1,500 and change, current high school students are in, in enrolled. In CTE. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right yeah. from what we were told recently. Which was, which was a, an encouraging yeah. number to hear then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. All right, just a teeny lag there with the screen. I don't know if they can hear it. I'm looking at their board meeting. I'm looking at your teams. Nicole. Hello, Rebecca, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear us? Okay, well, could you hear us? Could you hear me? I hope I wasn't talking over you. Um, Karina said that 
we would not be able to see you, which we can't. Um, so please speak up. We'll we'll just start talking here. Um, actually, I can see you in my background um, on the YouTube, but um, we can't see <laughs> necessarily what we're talking. So we'll just start. But Brian, we're having had trouble hearing you a little bit. But is there anything that you want to say before we start um, our presentation? Well, I just would like to thank Hanover for just their cooperation and energy, time and energy they Well, we appreciate um, the opportunity to be here. So thank you, Dr. Thurman, and all the members of the board. Um, I feel like I'm looking at you all on my side screen because I can see you on the YouTube, but I'm going to try to face forward um, so that you all can see our faces. Um, so before we dive into the survey analysis, um, I just want to provide a brief introduction of Hanover Research and our partnership with Ramona Unified, just to give some context for why we're here this evening. Um, so, um, and I want to make sure I can move these slides. Okay, there we go. Um, Nicole, I don't know if I'm moving that or you are, but I think that's me. Um, so, as Brian mentioned, my name is Rebecca Rippey. I serve as the relationship director and half of the account team to Ramona Unified, along with my colleague, Nicole Thomas, um, who serves as the content director to Ramona. So she oversees all of the district's research projects, and the two of us work together on behalf of the district and serve really as a thought partner to address the district's highest priorities um, through our research services. Um, there we go. Sorry, I got a lot of screens open here, so bear with me for a minute. Um, this slide is really meant to serve as a visual to explain what Hanover's services are and just describe what Hanover, or sorry, what Ramona has access to through its membership. So Hanover is a membership-based custom research, data analytics, and professional services firm. We're located in Arlington, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. Um, we support about 400 public school districts, educational agencies, county offices, and state departments of education around the country. And about a quarter of our members are in California. So I work exclusively with our California members. Nicole works mostly with our California members, although she does serve some members in um, other states as well. Um, through Ramona's membership, you all have access to this first wheel, which is our research services, and the far wheel on the right, which is the digital research library. Um, what the research services are is our custom research. So um, Ramona has access to an unlimited number of projects, custom projects, completed one at a time within a sequential research queue. So we, saw, we call that work stream a, a research queue. Um, and those projects can include surveys, they may be data analysis, qualitative research, best practices research, um, and members can expect to receive somewhere between four to six projects per year, depending on the scope and complexity um, of those projects. So uh, we work with members around the country on a variety of initiatives like program evaluation. We work with members on strategic planning, developing a portrait of a graduate. Um, and for our California members specifically, we support most of them with an LCAP survey um, and also uh, support initiatives such as community schools or the statewide TK rollout, for example. So um, when Nicole and I are working with our members, we also can lean on a bench of 200 full-time research experts. So we have experts in data analysis and survey design and analysis, the qualitative research, um, in-depth interviews, focus groups, and secondary research. Um, let me go to this last slide. So this is my last slide that I'm going to talk about before turning things over to Nicole to dig into the survey results. Um, but 
this provides just an overview of what our custom research project lifecycle looks like. So before we start any research project, our team has a very in-depth conversation with your leadership team about um, what the areas are that you're trying to address through research projects and any specific timelines that we need to be considering, um, how that research will be presented and used because that will determine like what types of deliverables we do. For example, if we do a survey, we might do a dashboard if you're looking to filter the results or we might do an infographic um, as a follow-up, which I know you all have from the, the survey that we just completed. Um, so once we kick things off with um, that that um, call to that we'll share like a scope of work so that you all can review and make sure that we captured um, the right pieces of um, of the project and then we move forward by turning that over to our research team that 200 folks that we talked about whoever is the right people involved in that project they will work on the analysis once we deliver that project we have another conversation where we really dig into the results of that research um, a lot of times that leads to the questions and will you know help us to identify what the next project is um, or we may already have a plan for what that project is um, so that is kind of, I think, the final piece. I don't know that you all are seeing the same slide that we're looking at on our screen because yours still says, has the wheels, but I think that's okay. So that just something to keep in mind, Nicole. I don't know why that's, that's happening. Um, so I'm gonna turn things back over to Nicole. Thanks, Rebecca. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, okay, we can hear well. Um, so just kind of wanted to give you a brief overview of where we've been and where we are now. Um, so Ramona Unified has partnered with Hanover since April 2023. Uh, the focus for the partnership has been on declining enrollment and CTE program evaluation. Um, as illustrated on the slide, we took a multi-methodological approach to address or we started with a labor market analysis so that we could identify high demand and high growth occupations and really use this information to gauge interest in programs and opportunities currently and or not currently offered by Ramona Unified. Uh, we then designed a CTE needs and interest survey to gather perceptions from Ramona Unified's educational partners. Uh, we, we, as you'll see sort of in the chain of events here, we just chose to design the survey well ahead of putting it into the field so that a QR code and link could be included on the infographic of the labor market analysis and that that would be widely distributed. Our hope was really to reach as many in-district and out-of-district folks as possible to solicit views of and experiences with Ramona Unified's CTE program. So we were really trying to capture um, as many views and perceptions as possible through this approach. Um, we then created the actual labor market analysis infographic, which as I mentioned, included a QR code and link to the CTE needs and interest survey. Um, we, the goal of the infographic was to pique people's interest, generate conversation around CTE, and give all educational partners a voice in the conversation. We then fielded the CTE needs and interest survey between January and February of this year. <clears throat> excuse me, we completed an analysis which included key findings and recommendations as well as an infographic that synthesizes the findings from the survey in a highly visual and easily digestible way. Um, as a next step, Hanover recommends completing a capstone synthesis, um, which would sort of be the uh, the synthesis of the labor market analysis and the CTE needs and interest survey to identify the overarching trends across the research projects 
to better understand the intersection between the local employment outlook and Ramona Unified's offerings um, for effectively preparing students for post-secondary success. So that's where we've been. Um, just to dig a little more deeply into the CTE needs and interest survey specifically. As mentioned, the survey was min uh, administered between January and February of 2024. You will see represented on the left that we heard the most from parents who made up 41% of the 558 total respondents. Um, students and staff had pretty equal participation, participation levels. Um, and across school sites, all of Pierce Middle and Ramona High had the highest levels of overall participation. Of students who participated, more high school students than middle school students participated, which you can see illustrated in the two middle graphs. And the graph on the right shows that overall respondents who are familiar with the CTE programs at Ramona Unified generally uh, view the programs positively with 64% indicating that they are either somewhat or highly satisfied. Um, though of note here, uh, respondents were asked Prior to this question, their level of familiarity with Ramona Unified CTE programs, and only those that indicated that they were at least slightly familiar, which was just over half of the respondents, saw this question. So you'll see that the end count is slightly lower um, as represented here. So the, the full report um, of the CTE um, needs and interest survey is much longer. It's about 25 pages. So for the purposes of this presentation, we'll focus on Hanover's recommendations and the key findings that led to these recommendations. Uh, so starting with the first one, we can see that the most frequently selected barriers to students' participation in CTE courses or pathways is that courses are not being offered in areas of interest, scheduling conflicts, not knowing that the courses existed, and not being interested in the C in CTE in general. Additionally, we asked students and parents which CTE programs or offerings they were interested in and see that culinary arts, architecture and construction, and other were the top three areas chosen. It's notable that 22% of the respondents selected other, indicating room for the district to expand its CTE program offerings to meet educational partners' needs and interests. We would recommend that the district conduct further research to explore specific areas not currently being offered by the CTE programs to ensure that any expansion or adjustments to the current CTE offerings cater to the, the diverse interests of students and parents. To the next recommendation, the question on the left was only shown to students grades six and up and parents of students at either an elementary or middle school, as well as students and parents um, at high students and parents of students at high school who have not participated in a CTE program. What we see here is that less than half of these respondents are interested in CTE courses. Um, additionally, as illustrated in the middle graph, of non-student survey respondents who were at least slightly familiar with Ramona Unified's CTE programs, less than half find the CTE courses very or extremely relevant. These two findings indicate an opportunity to 
really focus on and build understanding of the value of CTE course participation, as well as identify opportunities to align with what educational partners feel is most relevant. We also uh, found that there are opportunities for the district to strengthen partnerships with local businesses as concluded in the graph on the right with about half of parents, community members, and other non-community members indicating that they or their employer has never hired a recent Ramona Unified grad. And related to our final recommendation, the graphs displayed here speak to, the, to educational partners level of familiarity of CTE programs within Ramona Unified. As you can see, almost half of all respondents were not at all familiar with the district's CTE offerings. Further, we asked if they had seen or heard anything about CTE programs within the last year, and if so, through what mode or medium did they hear something? As you can see, more than half of students and staff have heard about CTE programs, while only about a quarter of parents have. Of students, staff, and parents that said yes, the majority indicated that the most relied on source of information was through the district or school's website. So these findings indicate an opportunity to involve more proactive strategies to increase students' and parents' awareness of and familiar familiarity with these districts' CTE offerings. Just recently, we completed this two-page infographic, which synthesizes and communicates high-level findings from the CTE Needs and Interest Survey. Um, the purpose is to present the information in a highly visual and easy-to-digest way um, for sharing with your broader educational partners. Uh, the infographic is organized by the three main categories related to the most salient themes and key findings. So those around current perceptions and participation, CTE program familiarity, and enhancing CTE programs, all of which we just reviewed in the prior slides, um, but just wanted to show you what the infographic um, looked like. Um, you'll also see that we did provide some disaggregate, disaggregated results by role. Um, where it would be valuable to compare across groups. And that is the end of what I have to present. And we will defer to you. Um, I know when we talked to Karina, we, we had, you know, a, a certain amount of time for the, the presentation, but we wanted to provide the opportunity for you all to ask questions about any of the research projects or our membership. So um, hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Um, but let us know what we can answer and follow up. Of course. So I have a question. Uh, I know that we have a very popular and very successful agricultural program, and it's not on the list of. Uh, I know that we have a very program popular that students are interested in. Successful agricultural program, and not on the list. I think if I heard you 
correctly, you were asking about um, some of the additional programs that students were asked about that Ramona Unified does not offer. Agricultural. Agricultural. And I apologize, I think we're having trouble hearing. I don't know if, if somebody who has the mic can repeat the question for us. Apologies. what you're seeing is so there the all of the programs that Ramona Unified offers were included in the line of questioning in the survey um, they may not be presented there if they didn't fall within um, I think it's the top seven um, but where we can dig more deeply into that information would be in the data supplement that was um, shared with Dr. Thurman um, so we're happy to provide additional access to that if it would be valuable. Um, some additional, I, what I thought I heard you asking is that there were some additional um, programs that we were gauging interest on that Ramona does not currently offer, um, which came from the labor market analysis project that we did. Um, give me one second and I can tell you. So the, the, in the labor market analysis, we identified um, the top four high growth and high demand um, uh, career clusters were health science, information, te and information technology, human services, and education and training. So of those four, um, Ramona Unified offers the information technology, which was the third most selected option um, as far as interest in the CTE needs and interest survey. The, the top one and two being culinary arts, architecture and construction, then information technology, and then business um, management and administration. Looking at the, I, I think maybe what you're referring to is the two-pager infographic, if, if possibly that's what you have in your hand. Um, but in both the analysis, the longer analysis and the infographic, architecture and construction um, was showing at 37%. The 22% other, um, this is where respondents were able to write in comments um so they they selected other and then they were asked to write in the other and one of and, and that's just an illustration the 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 green boxes the pop out construction is is one of the comments that one of your um respondents wrote in but as far as rating of interest architecture and construction was the second highest interest. 
at 37%. Yes, I'm trying to reshare it. Give me just one second. Okay. Are you able to see my screen okay? Okay. So your respondents were asked in which of the following CTE programs or opportunity are you or is your child interested? So this question was asked to students and parents. And as you can see here, architecture and construction was the um, second highest level of interest at 37th percentile. And then other um, was 22% which was the third highest, um, and these were just some of the comments that were left by your respondents. Potentially, yes. I didn't hear which one you were asking. I heard you say not on the radar. Which one were you asking about? Let me just reference the... So I don't actually see where agriculture was included as one of the options for um, respondents to select. I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to dig into that. We were provided the career pathways um, and as well as um, I believe it was construction one, two, and three. And so if it wasn't listed specifically, I'm trying to get to that information. I'd have to get back to you on which ones were provided to us um, because I'm just not finding it right offhand. appreciate the survey and the effort that went behind it and the participation of 
staff and students and parents. And I, I appreciate the information and now we can move forward based on that information and make decisions. And I appreciate that. All right, we have one speaker card on this item. It is uh, Dave Patterson. Mr. Patterson. Sure. Yes, so we, we do need our hand number people to stay on. Good evening. <laughs> I want to applaud you all for digging into this and keep the motivation going to uh, go for a CTE building. We really need that. I think everybody agrees. And, and the only thing, uh, everybody I talk to in town, I talk to a lot of people, much to their chagrin, and uh, I, everybody I talk to says, we need more CTE uh, training. And maybe not even some of the things that we're seeing listed here, you know, ones that are, are maybe, maybe you have programs that are of interest um, as, uh, you know, interesting programs just to dabble in, but maybe more towards uh, real career learning where it would move say someone into like I don't there's nothing here about electrical training you know someone would move directly from Ramona High into a journeyman electrician and move up quickly and and uh, those kind of careers that I, I I know are available here and I know there's a big shortage of electricians but I don't see any of that you know in this kind of stuff but you know, might need some consolidation. But on the other hand, I, the one thing, the other, other than the fact that the people that I talk to really want to see this go, uh, they also uh, say about the bond. You know, bonds are not real popular <laughs> around here. <laughs> Haven't been for a long time. But it's actually why we formulated the For Us group because of a bond failure. But the. Uh, they, everybody says the same thing, that uh, if there's a bond, it has to be very focused on CTE building, for example. Not a lot of other interesting things that might get used here or got it there. But I think you could find support from the people with that kind of focus. Thank you. survey anytime anything we want but people do get weary of doing surveys um, I don't know I guess I was hoping to see how many students were really excited and community members very excited about automotive and ag and if there was something we weren't doing like we have a new fire science how popular is that in in the student and community minds um, you know should we pursue that more Vigorously, um, 
And yeah, the, the absence of clear information about ag and about automotive, I, I don't know. It's, it's I, I like the data, but it, it's not the, it's, it didn't answer the questions that I had going in. Sorry. I, I know people worked hard on this. It just didn't hit the mark for me. Uh, does anyone else want to add anything? Okay. This is information only. We have had the information. Thank you very much to our folks at Hanover for presenting to us tonight. Um, I was just going to say if we could add to, comment to your comments, if that would be okay. Um, just in terms of the, the survey not addressing maybe all of the needs that yes it is a subscription based service so like you know like we've talked about the unlimited projects being able to address those through other projects and i'm i'm sort of thinking through like what other projects that we could do that would uh you know meet the mark to dig into the agriculture like you said if that was missed on the survey how else could we get to that could we do like a pulse survey so maybe we don't do as a a big of a survey but we hone in on some area like that could we do a qualitative study where we're looking at in-depth interviews where we're you know able to dig into something in that way um it also i know one of the projects nicole i don't know if you want to talk about like the capstone that we had talked about doing as a synthesis of all of the previous project work so that you have more information to build on to inform your decisions do you want to talk a little bit about that nicole you're on mute. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say one of our recommendations really is to um, dig more deeply and really try to unpack some of these initial themes. This is the very first iteration of this survey. Um, and, and absolutely, we want to ensure that um, if there are programs of interest that you um, want specific feedback on that we capture that either as Rebecca mentioned in a, in a pulse survey or in the next iteration of the survey. Um, I know that uh, some some programs were just recently launched in just uh, this semester, so spring 2024. Um, this survey was designed in early fall, so um, it was kind of contingent on availability of information then. So if there were any new ones that we would want to add for the next iteration of this. Um, but, uh, but further to the capstone, one of the sort of initial ideas that we had when we began this partnership was really um, looking at that intersection between the current labor market and what um, we could glean from this CTE survey and what what your um, community and educational partners were indicating as areas of interest versus where those high growth and high demand industries were and think about messaging um, and think about some strategies for not only increasing interest in those high growth and high demand um, areas for example, information technology being number two on the list in the labor market analysis, but number three on the list in, in, in the CT needs and interest survey, how can those two things align? Um, so that would be our next recommendation really would be to dig more deeply into all of this information through a capstone, um, but then of course, definitely including um, any additional programs that you would like to get specific feedback on um, either in a pulse survey or um, probably more appropriately in a next iteration of the full survey. And actually, and Nicole, I'm just going to add on to that, that the, the other pieces like, you know, communication became and like awareness also was sort of highlighted in the, highlighted in the survey. You know, some of the projects that we've done for other members in California was to highlight um, the pathways, what what it means to go through that program, what it requires, um, you know, more about that. Because if there is lack of awareness of programs that you're spending money and investing on, um, you know, and people don't know about it, there may be an, uh, you know, an opportunity to do more infographics or some sort of communication tool to your community.
I can help answer that. Those are the titles of the pathways. So fire science, for example, is under human services, but culinary arts is, a, is I think, under hospitality. Is that right? So there are some different naming pieces there of the pathways, but I think it goes back to what they're saying about awareness and, um, you know, some of the, the highest rankings were on not at all familiar with uh, parents and students of our CTE program. So I think um, their point is well taken and about us working to make sure our community is aware of, what's, of what we're doing. Okay. Thank you very much for that information. At this point, I believe we'll move on to item I2, and that is approval to enter into contract with Dale Scott and Company. Is this Brian? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you, President Perfect, uh, members of the board and community. This is um, a um, agreement that was presented to us at the last board meeting. Dale Scott was here, a member of his team. Okay, so what does this commit us to? This commits us, according to his agreement, to $15,000 to initiate a voter survey um, research uh, portfolio. So then from there, uh, once there's a decision from there, you have pre-election services and the bond issuance service. Okay, so I don't, I'm not looking at the entire agreement right now during this meeting. I'm looking at the um, agenda summary page here. Um, so right now, this recommendation is to approve the agreement with Dale Scott, and it includes these other charges should we move forward. Exactly. It's setting the rate that Dale Scott would charge for these additional services, but it doesn't commit us to them. Is that correct? It does commit us to the first item voter survey research at $15,000. Okay. Um, does it commit us to using Dale Scott uh, for these services should we move forward? Uh, yes. So we wouldn't then have the opportunity to meet with other bond advisors. This would commit us to using Dale Scott for the whole thing. I make a motion to move forward on approval of Dale Scott's plan. Okay. I'll second it. I have some questions. Yes. Has our lawyer reviewed this contract? Has our any finance person from our district or CPA reviewed this contract? Uh, certified public accountant. Our, our cabinet has. Finance person? It's a finan finance agreement. You mean Tori? For example, or a finance manager. Also, um, can we bifurcate, just uh, do the research first and decide about the rest later? So we are not committing ourselves to only use this bond company for everything because we might. Uh, so we want to see the survey first, and then, then we might decide about everything else, because everything else is contingent on uh, upon the board approving uh, voting for the bond. Yes, uh, partially. The, 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 when you initiate an agreement with a um, municipal organization like this, they will do a survey, and if the board can, decides to move forward, we are committing to using their services. Not 
Can we contract them for the survey only for now and decide about everything else later? They describe the way they are going to do water research. For example, the first three bullet points they are going to do survey on. We already know this information. They are going to ask overall performance of the district. They are going to ask voters uh, quality of education, quality of district facilities. We already know this. We don't need voters uh, to be asked about that. No, they, they have experts here that analyze that. We do not know what voter perception is right now. That's the purpose of the survey. We know what we think. So why do we need the, their perception if we know for, for a fact the condition of everything they're going to be asked about? Some, some board members may consider that important information before we decide to move toward a blood initiative. Also, they're going to ask about willing, willingness to raise taxes for bond. I think that should be bullet point number one, above uh, first above everything else. Also, when they ask about willingness to raise taxes for the bond, they need to also be provided other pieces of information. For example, it's going to be long-term or short-term, and uh, measure will willingness for each one, long-term or short-term. And also, when asked about that, uh, provide with number of uh, amount of um, principal and interest paid in each scenario. Also, they need to be. Um, provided with pieces of information when asked about that, um, how much they're going to be paying in taxes in um, long-term bond versus short-term bond. Uh, I know maximum is $60, <coughs> $60 per 100,000. So, but if it's a long-term, are they going to be willing to take this on? Or if uh, they're asked about longer-term bond, which will also show them interest is higher, but um, their payment is going to be lower on taxes, what they would prefer, which one. So they need to be also asked about that, not just in general, if they're going to be willing to um, raise taxes on their own properties. Uh, May I make a comment? Yes. All the questions you're answering or asking are legitimate questions that we all need to consider. But before we even consider those questions, we have to determine the mood of the electorate towards a bond. And that's all we're talking about tonight. All those other questions will be answered in due time. But tonight, we need, we need to get the, the feeling of the electorate towards a bond. And that's what this survey is about. It's not going to be accurate if uh, people are not giving those pieces of information to answer that survey, because it could be vastly different. Are they going to be saying yes? Yes, if it's a change their decision, how they answer the survey. So, Brian, <clears throat> will our staff have the opportunity to review these survey questions before they're used? And will we have the opportunity then for staff to interject and say, because uh, I thought Dale said when he was here that part of this initial survey would gauge community voter support for bonds of different structures, right? So he will include that? Even though it's not specifically listed here, it says uh, willingness to raise taxes for bond, but it, it doesn't say that he's going to evaluate different scenarios uh, through the process here. Right, yeah, so he <coughs> has a team that constructs the survey questions, which I can send to the board right away, depending on our action tonight, and uh, get the board's input on what those questions are. So I know there are long-term versus short-term,
Okay, so we'll see those questions. If the board has any input they want to give, then they can do that uh, straight to you very soon. No guarantee that board input really drives the details of this survey because we're counting on this professional that we may be hiring, right? But if board members have specific concerns that don't seem to be addressed, we can let you know that. Okay, very good. And then how uh, does Dale and his team intend to reach people other than what we see in the LCAP? Because Maya said, well, we already know this, and we do our annual LCAP survey, and we get some a, a little bit of this. How does Dale reach different people? He has certain thresholds that he needs to get, but I know the initial uh, mechanism for the survey is telephone calls. So when the survey, when I send you out the, the uh, possible questions that his team is considering, the top gives the, uh, kind of the text of the person that's making these calls. So these are phone calls that are going out, and um, they have to meet the thresholds uh, and these guys are experts in the analytics. Uh, if we do approve this, and we do have a motion in a second already, is there an expiration to this contract? So say we do this survey and we decide that we don't want to move forward on this election cycle with a bond, are we then committed to Dale forever? Uh, is there a time that then we can uh, evaluate the situation again? So, yep, so we do this survey, and maybe we move forward with a bond, and if we do, then Dale's our guy. That's what we would be agreeing to. And if we did not move forward with this November uh, bond bid, then after November, would we be free then to start pursuing working with some other agency if we chose? So there's an end date to this contract. The end date of this contract is June 30th, 2025. So that gets us through this election cycle and no more. But also, uh, if we're taking on and they're servicing the bonds, even if the case, if it's <coughs> a five or six year long bond, the contract expires in June 2025. So uh, there would be some subsequent agreement then beyond this one that would handle the issuances. Our contract expires before uh, in a year. That's to initiate those services. But the, what if nobody buys the bonds or not at the, the price we want to? What happens then? Cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. Also, uh, can I make two points? When when we met with Dale Scott, one of the things that he pointed out was that the best chance a bond has to pass is during a presidential election. And when you have the, the elections in between the presidential, the turnout is, is much less, and the chances of passing a bond is diminished because of that. Uh, and he also, he also pointed out that time is of the essence. I mean, this is, this is April, and if we get all this done, it goes on the ballot in November but we're pressed for time if we want to go forward with this. This contract also speaks about rating of the district underlying. So what is our current rating? I don't know if we haven't had any municipal um, bonds, so I would have to ask the Also at the end it says we're paying them for some kind of annual reports and then there's a clause that says they're not responsible for the content of annual reports unless I'm not understanding something correctly. They're charging us the accuracy. I think it's ac it said they are not responsible for accuracy of the report, but they're charging us uh, 500 to initiate and then 500 to prepare, something like this. It's on, on page, uh, page three. of 500 for each ADTR, which is, I think this is uh, the annual report, and then annual fee, so it means I think cost $1,000 total. And then um, somewhere else it says, oh, 
uh, uh, company is not responsible for determining whether any annual report makes an untrue statement or material fact or omits to state any material Responsible, not responsible for certifying the accuracy or complete completeness. Yeah. Okay. Also, this contract states that we are on the hook for reimbursement of all their uh, expenses, which could be unlimited for travel expenses and uh, all other um, third-party and uh, out-of-pocket expenses are payable upon the receipt. So they are going to bill it to us, and there is no limit to that. On the top of, yeah, okay. So yeah, the two. Okay. So, Brian, I would just ask that we um, try to put in a clause that says approved expenses. And then leave it up to staff to. <coughs> Okay. Uh, does anyone have additional input on this action item? One thing I'd like to bring up is how long has Mr. Scott and his company been in this business and how many school bonds have they successfully passed? Yeah, he did. And it was quite impressive. Yeah. yeah. Decades and decades and a hundred or so school bonds that they've had successfully passed. And staff did reach out to other districts in the uh, San Diego region who used them with positive uh, comments and results. Yeah. Well, I, I'm pretty confident that if, um, if we do approve this contract that Dale can do a good job for our district, I don't think he would waste his time with Ramona if he didn't think he could help us be successful. Uh, he's, he's a pretty big player in California with school district bonds. Um, so uh, at this point, with the first and a second, I'll go ahead and call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstaining. Okay. That motion carries uh, three in favor, one abstention, one absent. All right. Thank you very much. We're now on item I-3, and that is approval to enter into contract with CL Consulting Services. Yes, thank you. Perfect. And before, um, and community, this was also a presentation that was provided at our facility special board meeting. Um, Steve and Lori came, the chief operating officer and president CEO, to explain their relationship with the Office of Public School Construction and the reimbursement process and showed the multiple steps that are involved. It's a multi-year process from the time that their services are initiated to the time that we receive funds and undergo a successful audit with their help um, regarding the funds that come in. So they have provided an updated contract from the one that we had before because the one we had before um, seemed to end at the of this, um, as you'll look at the phases here, phase one, two, and three, phase one could take one to three years, um, the uh, appearance on the estimate says $25,000, that is not enough on payment, the uh, payments to CL Consulting are just on an hourly rate, and the beginning is the not to exceed $25,000 for phase one, so that's what we're looking at with CL Consulting. Uh, question. So this is for the 24-25 school year, the duration of this agreement? Is that yes, correct? But it's, um, it's still going to be an hourly rate. Uh, that makes sense. So after the 24-25 school year, if they're still digging in on phase one, they will still be paying this hourly rate. What they do include on the, um, the, I mean the signature Rates may change after June 30th, 2025. So this ties us into these hourly rates. Um, the work would continue, however, their 
Okay. So me being the trusting person that I am not. Mm -hmm. um, so how can we see that by the end of the 24-25 school year that we have actually reaped the benefit of this work? I see phase one, initial modernization and new construction eligibility analysis and determination for each school site, but that doesn't mean that we get any money coming back through phase one. And then phase two, completion of completed or prospective SFP funding applications, prepare grant estimate, prepare submittal. Okay, so mm, are they trying to tackle all of our potential projects in phase one before beginning phase two? Great question. So yes, they're going to identify everything that's available right now in mm -hmm. phase one. Of course, that list changes as projects come along. If there is a bond and there's construction involved, they would be involved in the early stages of that, ensuring So the term of this with the 24-25 school year for phase one scope of work below phase one, but it also says phase two, um, does that mean they don't expect to get to phase two in this upcoming school year? I believe that's what that means. And the term really is just setting the idea that they can change their rates at that point? And at that point, we could hire someone else, do it ourselves, or do nothing. I have a question. Yes. To clarify and to simplify what we're talking about here, CL Consulting Services pursues grants for school districts, and we hire them to do so? No. No. projects that have been eligible for state matching funds. Some are at 50%, yeah. some are at 40% based on what category of project it was. They were here a few months ago presenting. I, rem I remember. So when we're talking about upcoming <clears throat> potential bond and construction projects and we say, oh, but they're state matching funds. Um, so the state doesn't just, is not just forthcoming with those matching funds. We actually have to hire a consultant in order to pursue those matching funds. <coughs> yes, and with uh, someone on board, when we initiate those, um, our architect, uh, Mrs. Board, is very familiar with those requirements and working with um, the Office of OPSC with the consultant to make sure that uh, that, whole, that pathway is initiated right from the outset. The design, establishment of the plan, to all the way to um, completion of the plan, and then that's when those are completed and signed off. 
if I remember, if I remember correctly, in a previous conversation, um, we were told that CL Consulting doesn't have to be the ones to do this. If we had somebody on staff with the knowledge, expertise, and experience to do so, um, we could, and the, and the bandwidth, we could then engage our own staff member to do it. But we don't have those four things in a staff member here. Probably especially the bandwidth. And as I recall, part of their presentation, I remember them being here, was that the Ramona Unified School District, if the issue is competition with other school districts for funds, we can compete with anybody based on the status of our infrastructure and the fact that we haven't had a bond passed in a very long time. We're taking advantage of matching funds. There you go. Yeah. In a long time. We're, we're in a great position. We simply have to take advantage of the opportunity. Yes, they explained that you know, there will be lots of districts that, that propose bonds. There will be lots that pass bonds. However, Ramona having some of the hardship qualifications moves us to the top of that line. Okay. They talked about $4 billion of the $14 billion of the proposed state bond. Having said all that, I make a proposal to accept and move forward. Also, I saw some piece on the news. <coughs> Do we have okay. a second to that? Excuse me. I'll second that. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Maya. Piece on the news, what we get from CSBA, and it said that uh, because of the budget deficit, um, the California uh, is cutting, uh, among other things, 500 million from the school uh, facility aid program, which funds K-12 building project. Projects. So it no might be 13.5 billion instead of 14 billion. What is it? The future bond? It's talking about the current money that's probably set aside. I don't know if that's that's a matching fund pot. I don't know what that is exactly. It just says 500 million from the school facility aid program, which funds K to 12 building. Projects. <coughs> so the kind of matching yeah. facility dollars that we're talking about pursuing okay so so this um is probably will get money but it's not guaranteed it's still a gamble it's still a risk whether we get this money or not is it correct seems to me like we might need to make the investment in order to see a return uh it comes under the heading it takes money to make money it is frustrating because, yes, sometimes we operate like this matching money is, is a given. We do the project and the state sends us a reimbursement, but apparently they don't make it that easy. You have to work for it and pay somebody to work for it. Just like so many things with the state, it's complicated with some loopholes. Okay, so we do have a first and a second. I'm going to go ahead and call it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries unanimously. Thank you very much, team, for all your work, uh, our, our people remote also, uh, <laughs> and our staff here. I know a lot of time has gone into this. Thank you. All right, we are now on I-4, and that's our superintendent report.
solutions of promoting high literacy for students. For this year's symposium, one of our USD's own, Robin Aaron, Director of Student Learning Support Services, will be honored acknowledging Robin's significant contributions in promoting high literacy for all our USD students. Two weeks from tonight, some of us will be joining Robin at the Prado in Balboa Park, where Robin will be recognized as a champion for students who promotes high literacy as an educational asset and promotes their achievement, growth, and accomplishments for all of us. Uh, our USD is fortunate to have Mrs. Aaron working in so many capacities over the years, and especially now as she helps lead the Ed Services Department. Okay. I'd like to also acknowledge uh, some uh, another uh, uh, community member who helped show appreciation to our staff. Uh, Ms. Shelley Heimer of HT Financial provided a delicious appreciation lunch to the district this week. Um, she's also providing these lunches to school sites in the coming weeks. Uh, these lunches were also co-hosted with Jenny Taylor. Practice for Shelly, at least for several years, she's been bringing lunches to our USD staff members across the district. We're very grateful for thoughtfulness and recognizing our staff and all that they do every day. And finally, I want to acknowledge our CTE program staff for helping, I believe, it's about 41 students that qualified for the state level competition up in uh, Ontario uh, at the Convention Center this last weekend. Um, we had some great pictures sent to them eating at Denny's and, and, and their <coughs> outfits and things getting ready to both construction, auto, all the different areas. We had a lot of students who came to look great to hear the results today. I haven't heard those yet. Um, and then especially the staff members who went out with them. That's a, a big sacrifice during spring break to be with them all day and into the evening and all that comes with that. A lot of planning and, and uh, transportation. So just really appreciate our staff up there and our students that have been working so hard and the parents support uh, for those students and So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Board member reports. Dan, you have anything? Yeah, I've mentioned this before, but I feel incumbent on mentioning it again. We have the Ramona High School uh, Junior ROT, Naval Junior ROTC Color Guard, and they come to our forums every month, and they present the flag. And it's one of the most popular things we do. Last Saturday, we had four of them, and they were all in the eighth grade, eighth grade, uh, all four of them in, in the honor guard, and they were perfect. Every step was perfect. They marched in like little toy soldiers, and everything was done. You, I wouldn't change a thing, and, and our audience uh, gave them a standing ovation when they left. So that continues, and I'm very proud of them, and I'm very proud of... Uh, uh, their commander, Rick Jordan, who does a great job with these kids. Very nice. Thank you. Darren. Uh, very briefly, congratulations to all of our uh, employees of the year that have been recognized over the last few months. Um, with, an, uh, a special, with a special shout out to Jill Dillon. Um, I was fortunate enough to have all three of my daughters in her kindergarten class. And a great choice. She's been recognized before, but um, boy, when when she was put on this earth, it was to be a kindergarten teacher, <laughs> and um, and she fulfills that uh, every single day. So congratulations to everybody, and I don't know everybody, I just do know her. And I think very highly of her. Very nice, thank you, thank you, Darren. Maya, do you have anything for tonight? Also brief, I want to congratulate Ramona High School. I think it's a song team with their, for their outstanding victory. I think they won um, a state competition. Yeah. National. national. I, I thought I could be left wow. national, but is, it, is that right? So I, I had a thought when I saw it um, on the district's Facebook page, I thought we should recognize them, them at our board meeting. Probably we should invite them next time and recognize them with all honors. They deserve it, nationals, yes. Along I with the baseball team. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I thought, that's outstanding. That's something magnificent. Uh, so it's Ramona, song National team. Child. Song and cheer, song and dance. What, what's song, and song and dance team, yes. OK. Yes, that is fantastic. So can we uh, invite and recognize them we'll next time? we can do. We do have a lot of appreciation events coming up. So I'm okay. sure whether it's here or at whichever one is appropriate, absolutely, yeah. Uh, in fact, I think you have a pink sheet. 
here with some of those activities. But yeah, maybe at the board meeting. At Do the we board have meeting, any yes. Other, I will, well, I'll talk with Brian and see if we have any other, you know, champions that yeah. should be Because in the past, also. we used to have some we do. all kinds of champions to yes. recognize them at the board meeting. Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, and the marksmanship competition coming in first in California, 12th in the nation's fantastic. Uh, another fantastic thing in this publication school news roll call, uh, we have a feature on uh, superintendents in San Diego County with our very own Brian right here, front and center. I've circled him on there. It's a nice photo. Brian, congratulations. It looks real good. <laughs> yes. I think he's blushing. Look at as <laughs> as right. we start to go through the evalu uh, right. his, uh, annual evaluation process. <laughs> yes, yes, hey, yes. let me Look just put that. one in front of him. Just get right front and center on the magazine. Uh, excellent. And yes, in addition to student appreciation and recognition, we have uh, typically coming up a staff appreciation week or a couple of weeks. And Brian and Karina, I hope that you'll let the board know about those various activities that might be taking place and how board members might be able to participate and demonstrate our appreciation for our, for our outstanding staff across the district. All right. All right. Thank you very much. So with that, um, we have no other items on our agenda. Just to announce the date of our next regular board meeting as May 9th in this room. We will be continuing to close session but do not anticipate having anything to report out. So at this point, we will adjourn the open session meeting. Thanks for being here. <sighs> nine o'clock. <laughs> Is it 9.02? Oh, goodness. Wait.